Top on Weon Pass at this hour. By all means, the Ukrainian counteroffensive is not turning out as planned. No swift battlefield gains, little surprise element, and minimal impact. So far, the counteroffensive has been defined on these lines. A senior aide to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky admitted that the counteroffensive will be quite difficult and is expected to take a long time. He added that Kyiv needs an additional 200 tanks and at least 60 to 80 F-16 fighter jets to accelerate their offensive. For months, Ukraine has been trying to get F-16s from the West, a request on which U.S. and other NATO allies have dragged their feet on. It could still be months before Ukraine gets as many fighter jets that it wants. Till then, not much could be expected from Ukraine's counteroffensive, but the talks on Ukraine offensive somewhat shifted the focus away from what the Russian forces are up to. Reports say Russia is building a force of 100,000 soldiers. The purpose? To attack the northern sector of the front line. Ukrainian commanders say Russia was firing more than 500 shells per day at Ukrainian forces around Kupiansk in northeastern Kharkiv. Ukrainian forces anticipate that Russia is about to unleash an attack in the north. Russian news agencies also claim that Russian forces had advanced up to one mile towards Kupiansk. The Russian military says it also struck military infrastructure in southern Ukraine. Russia says its forces used sea and air-based missiles to hit military industry facilities, fuel infrastructure and ammunition depots in Odessa. The bombardment targeted the port city comes as Crimea Bridge suffers another attack this week. William Harrison Cotney is a senior fellow at RAND. William is joining us live from Washington, D.C. William, welcome to the program. Putin said Russia is preparing response to Crimea Bridge attack. And now there are reports that Russia has amassed 100,000 troops as it seeks to break through in Kharkiv region. Could this be the response the Russian president was talking about? And what's the message that Putin is trying to put across here? The strikes on Odessa and the grain uh, terminals, grain facilities there, uh, do appear to be part of Putin's uh, retribution, uh, which he promised uh, after the explosion on the Kerch Bridge. Up in Kharkiv region, uh, the massing of those troops probably serving a different purpose. You know, hardliners in Russia have been very critical of the Russian military leadership and Putin uh, for not making any successful military activities. And it was last September there that Ukrainian forces swept across most of Kharkiv region, really delivering an embarrassing blow to Russian forces. So it looks like the Russian forces are now trying to reverse some of that. But Russian forces may not have capability for offensive operations. Right. William, Ukraine has given Russia two options. They say leave Crimea peacefully or be ready for battle. What will be the end game of that? Uh, it's still too early to tell. Uh, partly it will depend on how successful Ukrainian forces are in closing the land bridge between Donbass and Crimea uh, along the border of the Azov Sea. Uh, if Ukrainian forces are successful in that as part of their counteroffensive, this will put more pressure on Crimea. Uh, it is possible that the Ukrainians will seek to oppose a naval blockade on Crimea rather than a frontal land assault uh, because uh, the land uh, isthmus between Crimea and the rest of Ukraine uh, is quite narrow. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. William, let's talk also about another issue that is being discussed here, and that includes the grain deal. Ukraine is setting up a temporary shipping route after Russia quit the Black Sea grain deal. Will this temporary basis in a recommended maritime route work in the long run? And is it, do you think, a viable solution available at this moment? Uh, it can help, but uh, it is not as... Uh, it is more costly uh, than shipping grain directly from the ports around uh, Odessa. 
Uh, so I think we're going to see continued uh, Western pressure on uh, Russia to allow the uh, grain deal to go forward. William, finally, and I want your quick reaction to this. How would you gauge the counteroffensive by Ukraine so far? Uh, the progress has been slow, slower than hoped. Uh, the Ukrainian forces are not yet carrying out uh, combined arms operations as, as effectively as they could be, and they don't have aviation support. In retrospect, uh, the West should have provided S-16s to Ukraine earlier uh, so that that aviation support for combined arms operations would be more effective. All right, I've been talking to William Harrison Courtney, who is a senior fellow at RAND. William, thank you very much for your time and for talking to me on Wild is One today. You're quite welcome. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.